So the Arizona Cardinals now getting Rondell Moore, which is interesting. So I did have a couple of wide receivers ahead of him on my board, but I do like him as a player. Uh, I guess the concern is, and I'm not sure how big of a concern this is with Arizona, but it's something, and I'm going to get into it more in the film study, is just how well will his skills translate to the NFL? That's what I'm just a bit concerned about. But, you know, he fits that. Listen, Arizona, they like to run a lot of screen passes. They like to, uh, you know, do things like that. And they like, they're like they probably going to want Rondell Moore to sort of be that guy who can just run deep. And Kyler, who has a great deep ball, can go deep with him or just set things up for Hopkins. So this is probably as good of a situation Rondell Moore could ask for, which is nice to see. But now let's get into the film study and talk about uh, sort of my concerns. But I also have a lot of positives with him. Okay, so let's start things off with this play. What's going to happen is that I'm not even going to break down the whole play. Mostly just this play is going to give you an idea of who Rondell Moore is. It's just going to be a little quick pass. You see how far off the defensive backs are playing. So you're just going to try and gain some yards. Pretty simple. So watch real quick. It's going to be a you know quick pass to Moore who makes the grab. At this point, his head is facing down. So he can't even see the player who's about to hit him. He, he looks like he's about to sit down on an invisible chair. But what's going to be amazing about this is, you know, this is going to show off, really, I, I would say his toughness. Watch him somehow stay on his feet. Looked like his knee was close to touching the ground, but I don't believe it did. And then he just gets up and runs, and he ended up getting a touchdown on that play. So really just an incredible, uh, incredible job of staying on your feet. And that is something that he really does have. It's hard to really quantify toughness. And one thing that I'm always concerned about with something like that is, will it work in the NFL when you have a much bigger linebacker making a tackle on you? It still is kind of a nice trait that he has. Let's talk about something like this now. So it's going to be a jet sweep motion. And I should mention, Rondell Moore ran a, according to his pro day, it was a 4-2-9. It looked a lot slower than that on film. Uh, to me, it's definitely not 4-2 speed, no doubt about that. I, I don't even think it's 4-3 speed. It's 4-4, four, four, like, to me, it was probably one of those, typically you add a tenth of a second, which would be 4-3-9. Uh, it was probably closer to, like, 4-4-5-ish. Four, four, That's just what it, it feels like to me. Uh, I could be wrong on that. He is fast. I'm not saying he isn't fast, but it's not, like, blazing speed that you might see when you look at his uh, 40 time or anything. So on a play like this, where it is going to be a jet sleep motion, still, you have a fast guy. And my, my point when I brought that up was supposed to be that he is fast, not that he is slow. Uh, when you have a fast guy, this is the kind of thing you'll use him for. And like, watch, right when this play starts, you know, it's that quick little handoff. And at first, he's going to kind of look, as of right now, this is a great fake. So much so, in fact, that when I'm recording this video, I thought for a second, oh, wait, did I put the wrong graphic up? He's about to run over the middle. But no, he isn't. He's running to the outside. I know this. I've watched. I picked this play out intentionally to talk about his great fake, and then it fooled me on this play. It's a really good job of him faking as though he's about to go over the middle. So much so that the Minnesota player who I've circled is completely fooled on this one so then when he gets back to the outside again he has enough speed that he can he can run back by a linebacker and he is going to get into the end zone for a touchdown so again he has good speed and more importantly you know he does have a little bit of footwork pretty good move right there uh I don't think his footwork and route running is as incredible as a lot of the other guys and that's a, maybe a bit concerning but he does do a pretty good job there there's also something like this where it's going to be zone coverage it's a play action he's running over the middle and one of the things that, you know, I really value footwork and route running a lot, but sometimes I do wonder if, you know, like it, the reality is there are some guys who don't necessarily have great footwork and route running who can still be successful. And this is a good example. We're just the type of coverage, uh, you know, th this situation, you don't always need the best route running. Typically, I like route running because, ex for example, if he sort of faked this, that it was going to go over the middle and then, uh, or excuse me, go straight deep and then go over the middle probably the safeties would stay deep. Whereas watch, he pretty much lets it be known where he's going and a safety came in and tried to make the play. But at the end of the day, if Rondell Moore can make those contested catches and make those tough catches and get there, get to his spot quickly enough, it's not going to matter about his route running. So it's a bit concerning because I don't know if that'll translate to the NFL, but it could translate to the NFL, which is kind of why I feel like Moore is just, he's a big wild card to me. Like this is another good example of what I mean by a wild card. So it's going to be, again, he's going to be running in motion, and I've circled the defensive player who's going to try to run in and make a tackle. And typically, I'm always a bit weary of 
drafting a guy who a big part of his game is making guys miss. That's just something I'm concerned about because, again, that was a big thing with Nikhil Harry was he could make guys miss. Well, then when he got to the NFL level and you can't really make guys miss like that, well, great. Now what else do you have? You need some other stuff, and I don't know if he has the other stuff. So it's concerning because if he can't make guys miss consistently in the NFL, if his toughness doesn't matter as much in the NFL— I don't think he'll be a successful player. I could be wrong, but I just don't think so. However, it also could translate to the NFL, which is what makes him a wild card. Because, like, watch this play. So right when this play starts, you know, it's a little pitch back to Moore. And honestly, this is being read well by that Minnesota defender. He reads it well. He realizes what's going on. The reality is he's just not going to have the speed to make up for it. Moore does get to the outside pretty quickly, and he's able to get the first down. And I guess my concern is just if number eight was faster, he probably makes that tackle and Moore doesn't pick up that many yards and doesn't pick up the first down. Whereas in college, he was able to do that consistently because he was faster than almost everyone on the field. But in the NFL, he might not be. But I want to finish off with this play because, again, regardless of how well his toughness will translate to the NFL, how well his ability to make guys miss will translate to the NFL, there's no doubt about it that it does just help you to have a guy who, when he steps on the field, it's it's almost like a, he almost reminds me a little bit of Steve Smith. Uh, I've, I've got made that comparison, you know, the Panthers one, uh, not, the, not the Giants one, where it just seems like he will just run guys over. He loves the contact despite being a smaller guy. This is a good example of it. Watch, real quick pass to Moore, who's going to make the grab, and then watch him just fight through through an entire team to pick up as many yards as possible. You love to see that. So yeah, not the biggest guy. He's listed at 5'9". Some people say that you basically add two inches to everyone's height, which means he might be like 5'7". Uh, I don't know. But uh, 5'9", that's a very short player. It just is. But I also don't know if I'm really that concerned about it. For one thing, I mean, Jalen Waddle is listed at I see him listed at 5'10", so, and I'm huge on, you know, his ability. I think Waddle just has the better footwork and better route running, but what Moore has is, I mean, he never really is worried too much about those go routes and things like that. I don't really see him as that kind of player who wins on the outside, but I do see him as a guy who could be a solid slot receiver. So, to me, that's kind of the intrigue here, but there is a lot of red flags. I, it's, it's, you know, I'm not as high on him as other people are, but I do see why people are high on him. So, uh, yeah, those are my thoughts. Again, uh, usually I try to just keep these more positive, but I do have some negative things to say about him. Hopefully he proves me wrong. Guys have done that before. Guys will do that in this very draft class. Maybe he'll be one of them. I don't know. Uh, but what, and, and I don't think he's like this awful prospect either. I think I had a third round grade on him. So it's not like I'm, you know, saying he's going to be a bust. I'm just, there's a big chance he could be a bust. That's what I think. What do you guys think? Let me know in the comments below. Always love hearing from you. And of course, as always, thanks for watching. <laughs>